Today I'm going to do a teardown of a cellular telephone base station. In this case, it's an Ericsson, and this is the transceiver unit. And this is a very early cellular phone base station transmitter. Most likely the sort of thing that would have been used with one of these. And this is Australia's first mobile telephone. That's quite a brick. So this is the final stage which goes out to the antenna. We've got two receives. We have a transmit and a test. Various LEDs and interface for control signals. There's the power input, 24 volts. And there's some sort of card here. With some IDs on it. R states. We've got year period. It says 9412. And here it says 9414. So I don't know exactly know how that translates, but that could be 1994, I suppose. Okay. Let's get into it. Okay, so the screws are all they're all either Torx or flathead. I don't have a Torx this size, so I'm going to use a flathead instead. Let's get the screws off and we'll have a look. Okay, so it seems like these are captured screws. That makes it easier for not losing the screws in the grass. Let's breach this warranty seal. Now there's the screw. There we go. have a look. We've got the two receives. This is the receive board. I don't know what that is. That's pretty interesting. Here's the transmitter. So it's the transmit stage. So we're going to have to get into that top section. Some very nice components in here. Okay, let's keep going. Now let's void the warranty on the top here. There we go. Got it. Okay, the screws are out. Let's have a look inside the top. Well, it doesn't want to move that easily. There it goes. Okay. So the transmit goes through here. through these power transistors. That looks like some sort of power distribution, maybe. Okay, while we're here, let's have a look under these cans. I have to get a close up of that. Check that out. the final output stage. So let's have a look at the underside. Okay, let's take the bottom panels off now. See what we've got. Okay, let's break the final warranty seal. Okay. Oh no, what's blocking it is the card. All right, get the card out. All right, we're in. Ah, so, we have here a whole host of ICs. Let's have a close look. So, you know, we've got, uh, I mean, I can see a Motorola IC. That's quite an interesting coil. Some sort of inductor. There's an unused pin header here. So I've got a crystal here. Some variable capacitors perhaps. So these indicator lights are for 5 volts, 
MDCOM status 1 and 2. So this is the main logic. Okay, let's lift some of these cans off and have a look. Okay, we have a few ICs and passives in there. Some sort of filter perhaps. Some more ICs, passives and some sort of tuning. ceramic filters and some crystals Toyocom okay possibly some more filters let's get a close-up of that Have a look. so we have these are some nice ceramic filters here. Toyocom. I'm not really sure what they are. They're pretty interesting. So just looking over the unit again. There's, there's one of those inductors. Okay, let's have a closer look at some of the transmit stage. So I've got all these wires coming off this board, flowing into this one here. I've got these big transistors. And it seems to feed through this thing. And then all these wires go to here. They're all all these wires are joined together here. And these are the high power output trends. So these are power amplifiers. So looking over the unit, it looks like a dress code, local control, MD link, alarm. This goes into this board here. And then by this ribbon cable comes through to this board here. And then this board is connected by ribbons to these two and this one. And this board has some LEDs. Transmit on, carrier. So this board is... doesn't have any RF on it, it's just some sort of control for transmitting. These boards look very similar, except this one's missing a header here. So they're almost symmetrical. Now it looks like this connector runs into, into here somewhere. So I'm going to have to take this apart a bit more. This board here, so that's obviously the transmit signal which goes into the amplifier. Maybe this board has something to do with the receive signal. So there's a really big component. Now that could be a reference signal of some sort, a reference oscillator of some sort. It just seems to have power. It's really only got five connectors on each side. It seems to be doing something with the power perhaps. Okay, so that's it for now. I'm going to take a break, get some Torx drivers and get into it a little bit further. Have a look at the power supply, have a look at this thing and take some of these boards out. Okay, I'm back after having a break and I found a bit that should work fine. So I can now okay, cover off and that's all we've got. A fan and a heatsink. Alright, well something tells me there's not going to be much sitting under this. But I'm going to take it apart and have a look anyway. Okay, now from how low this is sitting, I'm pretty sure this is going to be single sided. Oh, and there's one more right in the middle. 
Okay, let's have a peek. It's very single sided. Can't really tell how many layers. Okay, so that's coming out. Right, next, other side. I'm going to have a peek under one of these. We'll start with this one here. Okay, let's have a look at this board here. There are a few chips underneath and a can to peer under. Some RF stuff going on there. That connector is soldered in, can't be removed. I'll try to remove it at this end. How the hell are you meant to remove that? There we go. So, the board removed. Some RF stuff going on. And a few chips sitting underneath. It's a pretty neat little board. Well, I'm this far in, I may as well keep going a bit further. Okay, so the I mean the fins on the heatsink and the fan are all under here. So obviously this generates a lot of heat. So yeah, these components are screwed directly to the chassis with the fins and fanned underneath. Okay, we've got the screws out of this one. Let's just lift it up and see what is going on. There's some indicator LEDs from the front and single-sided board, not much underneath. So that's that one done. The last one, I'll just take this part out and see what's going on. Okay, screws are out. Oh yeah, this whole thing's pretty loose. Let's unplug some wires. Okay, so I've got this out, and it is an Airy Power DC to DC converter. Goes from takes plus 19 to plus 35, converts to plus 5 and plus and minus 15. 25 watts made by Ericsson in Sweden. Nice little converter. I wonder if that would be useful for something one day. I'll keep that aside. Okay, well that's it. I've had a peek. I've had a look underneath and it looks like that's also a fairly single-sided board. I'm not going to take those out. It's going to be single-sided as well, so that's it. And there we have it, one Ericsson base station radio module. That's it, we're done.